Hello, uh, in this video I'm going to talk about modularity as it applies to programming. Modularity is, uh, is kind of directly related to the notion of, uh, of a strategy we use in problem solving called divide and conquer. Uh, when, we, when we set out to solve a problem we think of it at a high level and we we decompose the problem into smaller problems called modules and then we work on the individual modules and then we put the modules together to solve the bigger problem so uh, i'll use lab 6 uh, the sound lab as a, as a way to demonstrate modularity uh, in general uh, when we talk about a module and i'm going to use a, 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 a a uh, hypothetical module let's just call this a mod is the module now what is a module modules have have two parts to it one is what is called the interface of the model interface and the second is the implementation so when we when we write our module we we keep all the all the uh, the body or the code that executes when a particular subroutine is called we put it in the implementation interface is what we export to the outside world export uh, to uh, callers of our module callers of the module so in we we use this kind of notation uh, convention if you will uh, where we write our module and say here is a module and every mo subroutine or function that this mod module exports will write them using this convention where we'll say they'll use the name of the module with an underscore after it and we'll say what this module does this is a function that this exports which means that anybody who wants to use this module will call this function maybe to initialize the module maybe there is a module uh, function called call maybe there's a module function called reset these are all functions that are available to the outside world so when we when we write our interface the interface is mainly focused on what is being exported this part uh, whereas the implementation the implementation is all about the implementation is all about the internals of our module now uh, as I said, it's a convention to use this notation of underscore. We use the name of the prefix it with the name of the module and then the suffix is this particular interface that you're trying to implement. So for example, this module has three subroutines and the interface which will be a file, the interface will be a file called mod dot h it'll be inside a file called mod.h and it'll have the subroutine function prototype so it'll have the function prototypes uh, ideally you not only put the function prototypes but you'll also put a descriptive uh, descriptive statement about what each module does for example each uh, each uh, prototype does so for example mod in it might be a function and I'm gonna make it interesting I'll, I'll say that mod in it takes some sort of an input it doesn't matter what it is let's say it, it takes a uint 8 underscore T um, some type input doesn't matter what it is and I'll tell you what what it's supposed to do in just a second but maybe this is um, and it returns an int 8 underscore T so so there'll be some descriptive statement here that tells you what the input is. So maybe it'll say that uh, call this function, call this um, function to to initialize the module, initialize the module, and it'll say something about the type field, like the input input parameters. It says input uh, type is is it can be zero or let's say time type can be one of three values zero one or two 
I don't care what that means um, and it'll say and each of those types has a certain meaning uh, zero implies um, zero implies uh, initialize for for a module for function X uh, use one for function Y maybe this module performs three different functions uh, but at any point in time it can only perform one function so the initialization will say predetermine which of those functions you are implementing for function z let's say so so that's that's a prototype so the descriptive statement will tell you everything about it so similarly there'll be another other uh, module another one here uh, i'm just going to make this mod um, call and maybe mod call takes two inputs maybe it takes a uint 16 uint uh, 16 underscore t colon x and maybe uh, or let's call that two different inputs a p in p parameter one input and uh, and uh, u int uh, 16 underscore t parameter two input right and there'll be some descriptive statement on it maybe it returns a u int 32 underscore t and there'll be some descriptive statement about it so the the world only sees this but the implementation will have the actual code associated with it now modules ideally will also have some internal routines it might have a there might be an intern some internal routines which are not export, exported to the outside world but these internal routines can be called from within these within your own functions but they because you did not export them you don't put them in 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 your uh, header file so maybe there is a there is a init, init function that is local to you local to your uh, thing um, to your module um, uh, maybe it's called actually let's call that configure maybe there is some function called configure internally and that internal function is not available to the outside world and so you might you might have this might take a bunch of arguments and and um, and maybe it returns uh, it returns some value also maybe it returns uh, int let's say um, I'm just using int for now because I want, I want to conserve the space there and maybe it does something but it's po perfectly possible that inside your implementation of one of these mod inits for example this is your implementation of the mod init inside your implementation of mod init you might this is the the code for mod init uh, again i don't care what the i'm not gonna write everything but somewhere here you might call configure and configure is your own routine but you're not exporting it to the outside world configure might be called with some inputs maybe you passing that type to it and it'll configure does a bunch of configuration steps but you don't want others to call that function directly you want them only to call mod in it now that's the big picture now the the implementation will itself sit in a file called mod dot c so that's how we tell apart the interface from the from the uh, implementation. So let's let's see if we can understand this within the context of of lab six. So uh, remember in the sound lab, and here's a here's the top level design of the sound lab. Here is the top level design where we are um, where we have a uh, uh, we have we. We have divided our problem into into several modules, and the modules here in this particular in this simple system are are the first module, which is a piano module. There is a piano module, or uh, it's called in in our in our um, in the hand in the sample uh, program sample starter file given to you. We call that the key module this is a sound module this is a music module this is for the extra credit um, and and there is a DAC module now the interesting thing about this picture as you will see is the main module uses these two so what does the main module do well uh, in order to use a particular module the main module is going to include the this these two modules it, it, there's a key dot h that it's going to include and it's also going to include a include a sound dot 
H. Now you will notice that the main module doesn't call the DAC module directly. It it doesn't even know of the existence of the DAC module. Whereas the sound module does call upon it. So what does the sound module do? Well the sound module is gonna include hash include the DAC module. So it says DAC.h. So that's how it it gets the functionality of the module which is the DAC module. So again the DAC module has has two parts to it. Uh, it has the it has the DAC.c and the DAC.h again uh, it this is each of these has two modules. I'm just going to write this as a DAC dot C and a DAC and a DAC dot H, which make up. Uh, actually, I think I used a different color, so let me keep it consistent. So I had this has a header file which is a DAC dot H, and it has an implementation file which is a DAC dot. C. So let's just focus on one of these modules for now and we'll look at these other modules also. So if you open your project and if you first open your project you should if you just clean your project if you say clean targets if you uh, drop down on the project and clean targets you'll see that none of the header files show so it just shows you the source files. So, so what you can what what you can do is if you click on one of these. Let's say we start with our main. This is your main program. Uh, it has it has the ones that I talked about in this particular case. It has the uh, sound dot h, key dot h, and music dot h. These are all modules that you will be invoking. Whereas the the sound dot uh, C has a DAC.H as we talked about. So what are these header files? How do these header files look like? Well, um, let's build it and then you will see. So when I uh, when I build this project, now every header file that you invoked is now shown within it to show you which header files sound is in uh, is is including. Uh, it'll tell you which header files Lab Six is including. Actually, let me. Um, build the entire project, lead, rebuild the whole project. So I rebuild the whole project. So you'll see that lab6.h, it shows all the dependencies of that. So if I were to copy this, so I'm going to copy this um, project tree from here and I can, I can visualize what is being told uh, here is that my my modules, so my lab6.h is including the, I mean, don't wor worry about these guys, just focus on the key.h, which is, which is this module, key.h, which is this module right here. It is including, um, in it's including my music.h, which is this module right here. It is including uh, my sound.h, which is this guy right here. Those are the three things we are interested in right now. Uh, the other other files have to do with some other modules, but we will take a look at those in just a second. Um, and similarly, we see that the uh, sound driver, which is a sound.c, has included the DAC.h, which is this module right here. Right now, that's the big picture. So let's take a look at. Um, let's take a look at what is inside our DAC.C. So if you look at what's inside our DAC.C, it has the it has the uh, the actual function implementation, and if you look at what's in DAC.H, it has the function prototype. It tells you that there's a DAC in it and a DAC out. So in other words, if you were to visualize, if you were to visualize the DAC, there are two subroutines that it's exporting in it and out. So the other way to look at the same information is to click on this functions uh, tab at the bottom here. If you click on the functions tab, it actually tells you what DAC.C is, is exporting. Similarly, it'll tell you what key.c is exporting. It tells you what um, music or sound.c is exporting. Sound.c has many subroutines that it's exporting. So all of those you will see have a general convention of being sound underscore, sound underscore in it, sound underscore off, sound underscore start and so on. Uh, the cystic handler happens to be a routine that is not inside, not uh, implemented by, uh, not really uh, exported by sound but it's it is implementing it because that's the that's the cystic handler uh, 
it, that is executed upon an interrupt. So let's take a look at some miscellaneous things that you will encounter when working with modules. The first thing um, I'd like to show you is first uh, let's let's try to identify what happens when you indicate when you um, when you include a module you write module you write so this is the example of a dac.c and dac.h this is an example of dac so uh, ma including a ma module you write including a module you write so if you write dac.c and dac.h then as I said inside your sound dot C you're gonna do a hash include DAC dot dot H and you can make use of it sometimes you will include a module a mod including a module including a module given to you So again, if it's given to you, you'll still do the same thing. So for example, lab6.c is using a module that we are providing to you called Texas. Actually, let's take a look at a different one. Um, in this example, I have something called a launchpad.c, launchpad.h. Doesn't matter what it does, but it's given to you. Launch, you don't touch it, you simply are are able to access it launchpad.c and launchpad.h so so you you for uh, for all practical purposes for you this this file is invisible you don't even look at it what matters to you is this because you might your function your lab 6 is calling routines in here so that's all it cares about again all you do here the same thing you simply include uh, launchpad dot h. You can also include. This is an interesting one. This is uh, you can also include a module. So when I say module given to you, I mean the source is given to you. This is the source that is given to you. Uh, include a module whose uh, object file is given to you object code is given to you but not source so this is the example of Texas lab 6 dot C is calling a Texas that we've given you a file called Texas dot O a Texas dot O which is an object file but there's also a Texas dot H this is an object file given to you but you don't the compiler doesn't really care because what matters to the compiler is the header file you will simply include that you'll include the header file So when the compiler compiles your code and looks for symbols, it will find the symbols in the header file. So it will pass the compilation and then when it links, it will look for, look for this file for linking and looks for this file for compiling. Linking and this for file for compiling because it has to do the type checks to make sure that you, you included it, uh, are referring to the functions correctly. Uh, so here's the last thing you need to know when working with modules. This is a common problem and this is one of the things that makes most most people um, kind of balk at using uh, header files. It's, it's called the double include or multiple include and this happens all the time. Now uh, it, one of the things with our with our code is all all the modules are including a hash um, there is a hash include uh, std int dot h let's take a simple example of this so for example the sound module the sound dot c inside sound dot c i have a hash include std int dot h but which is a system wide in, uh, it's a system file and i also have a hash include uh, dac dot h 
Now if I look at DAC.h and I'm going to show you what's in DAC.h you'll see that inside DAC.h there's also a hash include std int.h so here there is a hash include std int dot h. Now one of the problems with having this hash include is when when it, this include is called you go the compiler goes here and does another include. The problem with including something two times is there is a uh, the 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 prob this is the problem of double include is that causes redeclaration of stuff. Redeclaration of uh, it's not so bad if you do redeclaration of data types but if you redeclare uh, re a variable then you're in trouble causes redeclaration so how do we fix it the fix the fix for this is to make sure inside your dac.h you will put this uh, statement which says if not defined if and def so you'll put a label you'll say dac underscore h then you say if not def dac underscore h uh, actually uh, maybe this is not the place but we'll see uh, we'll say it hash define dac underscore h and we end it with our hash end if um, actually the, the scenario where this comes comes into effect will be clear in just a second because DAC in dot H in turn has its own if not defined so if sound dot C were to include DAC dot H and let's assume that um, that some other module um, also for for whatever reason I don't see why you would do it but let's say there's another module here um, called app dot C and app.c or uh, rather app.h has a hash include within it which is a DAC of uh, also of DAC.h uh, actually you can include header files within header files so typically what will happen when you have an include happening from two different places so so say there was a there was a module so let's say this one also this one uh, then did a hash include of of app dot h so what's going to happen is the first time DAC.H was included, it's going to get all these. But when it includes app.h, you didn't know that this app.h include in turn did a DAC.h include. But what's going to happen on the second include it, it's going to come here and says, oh, this has already been declared, so I don't have to go through this process. I can just come out of it immediately. So this prevents prevents the compiler from having to re revisit all of these declarations because you put a clause here this this clause here is saying this clause here is saying do not execute the following following if dac.h is already defined And because DAC.h was defined the first time, so when you came, when you did this, you went through and and because it was not defined the first time, you go through all these statements. So it is it is now defined. The second time when you go into when you execute this one a second time, you come in here and you immediately leave because this one is true the second time. So uh, we use modularity uh, to to divide our code um, in a in a in a in a neat way so that we can we can write modules that take care of one task and we can reuse the modules from project to project. Um, in fact, you'll use all of these modules by the time you get to lab ten if you've written them in a in a in a in a clean way. You should be able to use the module as it is when you get to lab ten.